micro factories reinventing manufacturing. I define manufacturing as making things that you need and use on a daily basis, including the journey that it takes from the point of manufacture to when you have it in your hands. Let's go through an exercise just to understand what I'm talking about. Think about a th product or a thing that you bought online or in a big box store, and think about the, its journey from the factory to your hand. So it was obviously manufactured in some big factory, some place far away, with resources and materials coming from other places that were far away. The product was made. After it was made, it was packaged, put into a larger box, put into a container, and the container was shipped to a distribution center. At that distribution center, they took that big, big, big box out of the container, put it into another container because it had to go somewhere else. And then it came to another distribution center where they took it out, took the items that you had in that big box there, and put it into another container that went into a retail store. That retail store opened the whole big box and took your product out and put it on a shelf. And then you walked in. And when you walked in, you saw that and said, that's what I want. And you took it and you bought it. That's a long journey. And when you start looking at that journey, you have to under think about what this make-to-use model looks like. And in order to understand this supply chain or this manufacturing process and its supply chain as it exists today, we have to go back in time. Let's go back 200 years, 1700s, 1800s. Then you had blacksmiths, tinsmiths, copper smiths, glass blowers, ceramic makers, carpenters, cobblers. They made whatever was required by that town, by the people in that town, for their kitchen, for their house, or for their work. There was no Amazon or Walmart at that time. The products that they made were for local consumption, created local jobs, employed local talent, provided a career for the children who lived in that area, and it created a local economy. As these small towns started growing up, the demand for products started increasing. And these tradespeople and the artisans could not keep up with it. So they started sort of consolidating and they lost their jobs. But fortunately for us, that was around the 1900s when the Industrial Revolution came in play. Mechanization, standardization, and the factory system. They started building these factory towns where you could make batch of products. The artisans and the craftsmen made small batches of products, custom and on demand. Suddenly the factory town said, hey, we could manufacture big batches and send it all over the country and we can start capturing the market. So the factory town started emerging. As these two different phenomenons occurred, the factory town started growing, and the small town started collapsing. Then around the late 1900s and early oh, 2000s, another phenomenon came into play, globalization. Someone said, hey, we need to start supplying this all over the world. So we need to make not big batches, but humongous batches of mass manufactured product that we can ship all over the world. So the factory towns started collapsing. Global factories started emerging, and so did the global supply chain. So that's where we are today. And that's where we take the story forward. Now, when you look at a global supply chain, a chain consists of links. And as long as the links are linked, and the links are strong, the chain is strong. What happens if a link breaks? 
the chain breaks. Think about what happened during COVID. That huge supply chain that existed collapsed because links started breaking. As a result of which, we know what happened. Now, as you go into the next generation of thought, it is important to think about what are the alternatives and how do we get to that point. The long supply chain, is what I call it, is not feasible because due to mother nature, political, business conflicts, things are going to become more unstable in the long supply chain and more links are going to break. And as they break, we are going to experience larger costs and possibly consumer costs. So the alternative is what I call the short supply chain. Make as close as possible to the source of demand. Order, make, deliver based on micro factories. What is a micro factory, you may ask? Obviously, good question. <laughs> a micro factory is a manufacturing platform that could fit in the size of the stage. It consists of intelligent, smart manufacturing equipment that's computer controlled, that is where it is possible to make the product and, sh and package it and have someone pick it up. So when you look at this model, the question is, what consists, what, what are those pieces of equipment? Well, you could have 3D scanning, 3D printing, computer controlled machining, robotics, and a, possibly a packaging machine. So let's go through an example. In 200 years back, if someone wanted some crockery or some dishes and some cutlery, it was most likely that a ceramic maker and a glass blower made the cups and the uh, dishes. The blacksmith and the silversmith made the cutlery. Fast forward to now, okay? I go to a store, I pick it up from the shelf, and I have it. Fast forward to the future. I go to an app, I go through a catalog, I pick out all the dishes I want, all the glasses I want, all the cutlery I want, and then I say, hey, I don't like the shape of that, uh, 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 that end of that spoon. I want to change it, and I want my name on all that, because I don't want anyone stealing it. Okay, so, and, you know, I have some favorite colors, so I'm going to put some colors on it. I submit the order, and a couple of days later, I go pick it up. Does it remind you of an experience 200 years back, where the person in the, village, in the small town went to a blacksmith and said, I want this, I want this, and I want it customized, and the person made it, and a couple of days later, you came and brought it? The same concept, except now, it is possible to do that using digital technology. So that experience and that process is what I call the microfactory process. It is a decentralization of mass manufacturing using the long supply chain into a short supply chain that makes products on demand that are custom and in small batches. So you might ask, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> all that's great, but give me an example of what it might be. Well, think about it. If you decentralize manufacturing into little places, it could be a vending machine with a 3D printer behind it, okay? Dispensing forks, knives, and spoons made out of hemp plastic. You press the button, it, print, it obviously prints it out, or it, it would have printed out a buffer of inventory, gives it to you, you take it, you do what you want with it, and when you're done, 
you come back and put it in a receptacle, it takes it, crushes it, and makes material for the next batch of product. So you can recycle it. It's a 360 degree process. Let's go back to another version of a micro factory. We have hardware stores everywhere. We have a building like this, this is 140 years old. We have parts and fixtures that need to be replaced and, and, and fixed. Do you think you can go back 140 years, go back to the blacksmith who made this thing and said, hey, can you make me one more of those? It's, I don't think it's possible. But I think it's possible to scan the part that you want, recreate it digitally, and then remanufacture it using 3D printing and other technologies. And that is what is possible with a micro factory hardware store. So rather than the hardware store carrying inventory of things that might be used, may never be used, or have a large amount of inventory, they can make parts as the customer needs them when they need them. Let me explain something, and let me be very clear. The long supply chain that I talked about is not going to disappear. Hey, we had the Silk Road once upon a time, so that was a long supply chain, so, you know, guess what? It's not going to disappear. But what we can do is take stuff out of the long supply chain, create short supply chains using micro factories, and start populating areas of our country, of our world, that have been impacted with loss of jobs and loss of, uh, of, of economy, and create pockets of manufacturing capabilities locally with a local supply chain. And most of all this can be done today because of the technology that are, exist in, in the public sphere. Now, there are companies all over the world that are, do, are doing this, but at a larger scale. What I am asking you all to think about is how can we bring this back to where it used to be where we had blacksmiths and tinsmiths and cobblers and create the div digital versions of those artisans and create jobs back to where they need to be. For one thing, with all the younger generation coming up who are basically doing this with their digital devices, this digital manufacturing space fits in very well with that paradigm. So it gives a pathway for the next generation, number one. Number two, it creates jobs locally. Number three, it is a very interesting model for creating local supply chains. And if you ask me to give you an example of an analogy of that, you heard of greenhouses, aquaponics? That is another supply chain, the farm to table. We just saw, you know, the, the, article, the, the video on farming. Large farms create large problems. There is a tendency towards and a trend towards moving to greenhouses and aquaponics. And where do they sell their products? At farmers markets. Think about it. Manufacture locally, sell locally for local demand. So the three principles that are important here is make as close as possible to the source of demand, create market spaces in a community or in a space, and educate people to understand the value of the technology. 